HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, you'll hear about the upcoming Memory Cafe. We have the latest Hiller Sports Report. Hopkinton High School hosted their annual International Night. And we have scenes from the DPW opening ceremony. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. I miss the way her instinctive fingers could amaze her Steinway. One note rising, one note kneeling. I have been two years, five months. All are welcome to the next Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, which will take place at the H Camp Studios at 77 Main Street on November 17th. Uh, Wake Up and Smell the Poetry started out as a poetry reading um, 15 years ago uh, at a cafe in Bellingham. And because the cafe closed, I brought it over to Hopkinton. We started at the uh, HCA building, and it was getting too small in there. And the warm and welcoming HCAM Studios invited me to bring it over there. And as we came over to the studio, we also, uh, I invited singer-songwriter friends to come share their songs and authors, writers, uh, storytellers as well, screenwriters. So it has blossomed and it's a community forum to introduce different artists, authors, singer-songwriters to community, perform their art, and also give a platform, give opportunity for uh, people who are in the arts to share some of their talent as well. Find his glasses nor his soaking teeth, his fingertips upon the nightstand felt, nothing beneath but the old and wrinkled doily upon which his things had rested. Crestfallen, he got down upon his haunches. The blues girl blues. I had the blues girl blues. I was a blues girl all the time. The phone, grab the guitar, went to a place where you can find more information about Wake Up and Smell the Poetry at our website hcam.tv. I'd love for more people to get involved from our community. They can come to HCAM Studios next Saturday, November 17th. The doors open at 10. We get started at 10:30. They can show up as audience. Um, we have an open mic. Usually there's advanced sign up, but there might be some spots available that morning as well. And uh, there's the information every month on our website at HCAM TV too. Touch the moon, use Big Dipper for your spoon. Joys everlasting, sights far outlasting, fireworks of rainbows blasting and blasting. Aboriginals go around and they knock on the trees until they find a hollow one. They cut it off, put a little beeswax on it, flap their lips, and you get a sound from it. Host of the program, Cheryl Peralt, is excited about what's coming up on the next Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Very excited we have poet and essayist Crystal Williams coming from Boston. She is associate provost of diversity and inclusion and she does great work over there uh, at Boston University and she also is a very highly respected and accomplished poet. Uh, started out as an actress and went over to uh, 
slam poetry in New York City, and uh, now we are fortunate she's here in the Boston community, and she's going to be sharing some of the poetry from her published books. And we have Kevin So, who started in Boston as a singer-songwriter, first performing cover songs, uh, and he claims uh, Asian American identity as a folk singer, songwriter. He went to uh, writing songs in the 90s in the local circuit here, went back, went over to LA, then to Nashville. Now he's back here and he's going to be sharing some of his original songs uh, with one of his band members also. So I'm really looking forward to this event and we have a great lineup for the open mic as well. And carry on when you're rolling with your crew. Would you like to see your sister get these cat calling blues? cutting ceremony took place to officially welcome the new Hopkinton Department of Public Works facility. Here's a look. So the town of Hopkinton was incorporated in 1715. I'm pretty sure the DPW that just got knocked down was built right around then. Uh, I can tell you that personally I was responsible for at least three coats of paint on it. Uh, growing up I, I got to work down here for quite a bit with some of the some of the old timers and, and uh, their memories that last me a lifetime. <clears throat> but this facility really is unbelievable. Uh, thanks to John Westerling, uh, Mike Manser, Eric Cardi, and all their staff for keeping the great tradition and, uh, and pride of the DPW, the Highway Department, Water Department, Sewer Departments alive and well. Um, so we got a lot of people that are going to be up here speaking about the DPW. I'm going to focus just a couple of minutes on who it's named after, uh, Tom McIntyre. So this is the first time that I've spoke publicly about Tom McIntyre um, for a while, and I don't know how it's going to go. So if I turn into a blubbering idiot, I apologize for that. He's up there, gonna, he's going to laugh hysterically at me if I do. Um, <clears throat> outside of my wife and kids, I don't know a person closer to my heart than Tom. He was the best guy that I've ever met in my life. Um, taught me a lot of what it was like, like how you should be a dad how you should be a husband, how you should be a father. Uh, Tom was the best. And if anyone disagrees with that, I'd be glad to have a discussion with you elsewhere, away from cameras. Um, and so now, instead of in that little building, that staff can maintain our 110 miles of road, 76 miles of water main, 40 miles of sewer line, 350 million gallons of water that is delivered, maintain 6,000 water meters, 668 fire hydrants, and 2,600 cat bases, and that's only the beginning. Our DPW has done an amazing job with a less than amazing facility for many, many years. You know, they're, they're, the, they're the department that when everything's going well, nobody thinks about it. And, and to, to Claire's talk about the, the building, Everything was going well, so nobody said, well, let's build them a new building. But I remember several years ago, um, just before I became a, a selectman, John invited me down, and right after a snowstorm, I brought a couple dozen pizzas with me to, to thank the guys for doing a great job plowing. And I said, where do we set up? And we were going into a room that was the locker room, it was the meeting room, it was the everything room, and it was about the size of that truck. And I just, I, I couldn't believe it. And so this was so this was so long in coming, but it's uh, so well deserved. And I just really want to again thank the citizens of Hopkinton for st sticking behind the uh, the DPW this time and giving them their their, their due. On, uh, on zero, three, <laughs> two, one. Awesome. extends its congratulations to the town of Hopkinton in recognition of the joyous occasion of the new Department of Public Works facility ribbon cutting and then a lot more stuff. <laughs> thank you so much. Well thank you everyone for coming today. I want to echo Claire's words. This building has been a long time coming. 
and I know it's going to serve the town well for a long time in the future. And I appreciate the kind words for about my small involvement in this project, but there are a lot of other people that were involved over the years on this project as well. Really too many to name them all, but I see a couple of people here I want to recognize. Uh, Jeff Alberti from Weston and Sampson and the design team over there. We didn't give much room to work with here, but you did a great job. You got a nice, good looking building and a functional building, so thank you. I, I look back over some of the old reports. Your name goes back on this 10, 12 years, so thanks for sticking with us. Anytime. Over that same period, I can't count how many DPW directors we went through. I, I think I'll have to start using my toes on that one. But seven. <laughs> seven. We finally found one that stuck with us, John Westerling. Thanks for pushing this project through the finish line. John Palmer, and all the folks at McIntyre Loom, great job on the steamroller. Looks nice sitting out there. But at the end of the day, this building is just that. It's just a building. It's the people in the building that work here every day doing their job without any fanfare that keeps this town running. So I want to thank the staff of the water, sewer, and highway departments, past and present, for doing what they do and, and keeping us uh, this town running. So thank you. And finally, as much as I'm happy this building's done, it's bittersweet to see Tommy's name there. He should be standing right next to me. But on half of the entire McIntyre family, Kathy, Tommy Kelly, I want to thank the Board of Selectmen and the entire town but thank you so highly and taught me that you gave me this honor. Thank you. Still to come on HCAM News, Hopkinton High School hosted their annual international night. We have the latest Hiller Sports update. Matt Clark has our HCAM insider and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. It can be lonely living with Alzheimer's or other forms of dementia. but you are not alone. Memory cafes across Massachusetts are bringing people affected by dementia together at welcoming social events. It's fun. I am so thankful to have a place where my mom and I can go and laugh and just enjoy the experience. I've made new friends. They understand what I'm going through because they are living it too. Memory cafes encourage me to try different activities, which is really refreshing. You'll find guest artists, musicians, and dancers, educational programs, or simply a place to relax and chat with others. These free gatherings are offered weekly or monthly, and you can go to as many as you would like. Visit jfcsboston.org slash memory cafe directory to learn more and find a memory cafe near you. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton High School hosted their annual International Night event. Here's a look. 2018 HHS International Night. We're excited to be here with uh, 24 of our international friends from far-reaching places as far away as, as from China and uh, Germany, Poland and Italy and, and many, many other places, wonderful countries. Uh, tonight's a really great celebration, hard work of Laura Tice, our ambassador. Uh, Hopkinton Ambassador Leader, uh, one of our foreign language teachers, has worked really hard with our Hopkinton High students to, to welcome our international friends, and Andy Longoria, who recruits the students each year to come. So we have an amazing cohort tonight. We're excited to hear their presentations and performances, 
And uh, it's really a unique opportunity for the town of Hopkinton to kind of welcome in some people from all over the world, show them how we live our lives, how we treat school, and uh, create some friendships that are likely to last for a long, long time. So uh, we're thankful for HCAM to be here, and we're looking forward to a wonderful evening. So this is French Club, and basically anyone, French speaking or non-French speaking, can come and we do a host of different French themed activities like games, music, and lots of food. Yeah. Basically, that's it. Okay. Uh, it's a really fun time, and it's a really good way to explore different cultures in the Francophone world. What do you have for food tonight? What are you offering? We have the lamb Navron. Okay. Moroccan lentil soup. Really nice. Yeah. And from saute. Okay. And pie, paired with French cookies, French baguette, and three different types of French cheeses. My name is Laura Tice. I am the advisor to the Ambassadors Club here at Hopkinson High School. We developed and implemented the Ambassadors Club to help our international students, our exchange students every year, better integrate into the school, make more connections, make more friends, do more fun events, go to Hopkinton High School events, uh, and just really have a, a better connection to people while they're here, because they've always come here and had a great education. Our teachers are fabulous. But this also provides them the opportunity to make lifelong friendships. So as you can see, uh, there are so many kids here that are having a great time. And just like Mr. Hanna said, it's a, it's a great way to, to make connections across boundaries, across borders, and across countries. I'm from I'm Italian and for the international night we uh, we did these posters basically this is like a game true and false um, and it's gonna be so fun because uh, when we came here we saw that lots of Americans don't really know uh, these things and oh and we made also posters right here about Italian gestures when we are explaining the meaning of our gesture and it's gonna be so fun and we also have like lots of food, tiramisu, pizza, pasta, so yeah, I'm so excited. My name is Isa, I'm from China, and today we cook the fried rice, sticky rice, and some candy, and yeah, today we will, we will present our country, and we will have a song, we will perform a song. Hello, I'm Glam, the international student from Thailand, and today I'm representing my country, Thailand. Uh, I brought like some fabric from Thailand too, and some handmade fan. <laughs> and also, I brought some food, which is uh, the beef jerky and sticky rice. And the dessert gonna be litchi.
This past week, Hiller Girls Volleyball started their playoff run. Here's a look in the latest Hiller Sports Report. Hopkinton Hillers Girls Volleyball earned the third seed in the Central West Division I bracket. In the first round, they swept through 14th seed at Doherty, 3 to nothing. Little tip over kept alive. Wow, nice play from Annika Lindstrom. Jenna, tipped. They're going to Ingrid and into the net. In the second round, the Hillers took down 11 seeded Shepherd Hill by way of the sweep. Then in the semifinals, the Hillers fell to second seeded Franklin 3 to 2. Franklin won the last three sets to take the victory. Hopkinton finishes the season with 19 wins and two losses overall. Congratulations on a great season, Hopkinton. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark. And here's what's happening this week on HCAMP. On Friday, November 9th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with members of the South Asian community of Hopkinton on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. On Monday, November 12th at 7 p.m., HHS students gather to perform and share their talents and abilities on the HHS Talent Show on HCAMP Ed. On Tuesday, November 13th at 6 p.m., the Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAMP TV. On Wednesday, November 14th at 7 p.m., the Bay Path Humane Society gives a presentation on the common dog training pitfalls on a brand new HCAM TV special. And on Thursday, November 15th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Girls Playoff Volleyball vs. Franklin game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community, and check out the new Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at newsathcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Hopkinton Town Hall recently tested out all the ballot machines in preparation for the upcoming elections on November 6th. So uh, we create a test deck, as it's called, that is uh, just an assortment recommended by the state to make sure that the machine is reading all of the ovals correctly for the ballots. And we test all of the equipment just to ensure that everything is running properly before Election Day. Terrific. And is there any differences um, with the uh, national election um, compared to a local election as far as testing goes? Nope. Uh, we actually do the same test where we run a deck of 50 ballots that are run through the machine with a handful of absentees as well. And in this case, the only difference is we had a few early ballots to ensure that we can test for all of the different types of ballots being valid. 
All right, and uh, how has the uh, early voting gone so far? So far, it's going pretty well. I don't have a total in on after uh, today's, but we're definitely over 600 by now. All right, and uh, what's your prediction about the World Series? <laughs> I think that's obvious. We're going to sweep the, the Dodgers on this one. So, on a footnote, uh, this I do not have written down. Uh, the first time I think, it was one of the first times I met Scott. Scott was in charge of the, uh, I think it was the Boy Scouts. So he called and said, we're doing a roast for Tommy uh, and we'd like you to come up and be the roast master at the country club. Would you be interested in doing that? I'm like, oh my God, would I be interested in doing that? <laughs> so, I went online, I saw all the Comedy Central roasts some clean, some not so clean. Uh, so I had a knockdown. Some people weren't gonna be able to stay in their seats. They were gonna fall out of them. So I got in there, recently started working. I think I was working at, a, at, at the prison as a nurse. And I look around, the first thing I say is, Jesus, this is like I'm at work. I'm looking out in the audience and I see a bunch of priests, a bunch of Boy Scout leaders referring to the prison. And there was nothing. <laughs> so Tommy looked at me, he goes, hey Buck, I don't think this is that kind of roast. <laughs> and it wasn't. So I had to go to plan B. But, um, so we're going to do the ribbon cutting now. Um, we're going to have uh, Danny McIntyre, Tom's brother, uh, come up, Claire Wright, Eric Carty, um, any representation from, the, from Tommy's family that, we'd, that would like to be in. We're going to come up and have that and, and um, go from there. Let's do it right in front of you. Right here. Right here. Right. Right. So, you ready? He, he's going to give you the cue. Uh, on, uh, on zero. Three, <laughs> two, one. Reflections. We have Susan Nickel here from Senator Spilker's office that would like to say a couple of words to you as well. Thanks for this opportunity to bring congratulations.